I am. A boxer, right? Well, actually, I'm not a boxer. I'm really an educator. But deep down inside, I'm really a boxer. It's not because I engage in boxing matches, and it's definitely not because I have a strict workout plan, but it's due to the mindset that I have. A mindset where I embrace connections, constructive criticism, and change. Not a mindset where I promote seclusion, severance, or silence. If you really think about it, educators and boxers have so many things in common. In fact, I believe that if all educators embrace the mindset of a boxer, then they will be a connected educator. I want you to go on a journey with me where I unpack the different qualities of a boxer and show you how closely related to an educator they are. Perfect example. When boxers are in the ring, they have people in their corner called the cornermen. I know, that sounds really catchy. Cornermen. Well, all the people in the boxer's corner are responsible for providing that boxer with the things that they need to be successful. First up, we have the coach. And the coach is there to provide the boxer with training that they can provide inside the ring. When the boxer is in the ring, the, the coach is right there watching and looking at all of the different moves that the boxer is doing. And when he gets an opportunity, he gives that boxer feedback. Same concept applies in education. Teachers have coaches. The coaching techniques look different depending upon the teacher. Some teachers need their coach to co-teach with them. Others may need their coach to model with them. But then there's some coaches that just need feedback. Regardless if it's a novice teacher or if it's a veteran teacher, they can all benefit from working with their coach. In the words of Bill Gates, everyone needs a coach. Now I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the cut man and the corner man. Now the cut man is there to provide the boxer with wound care, but in some instances, that is provided by the corner man, who was also there to provide the boxer with moral support. In education, we call those people members of our prof professional or our personal learning network. I have several people that are a part of my professional learning network. Some people I see every day, some people I speak with on occasions, and there are some people I've only met on Twitter. What's up to all of my tweets in the audience? So regardless of how I've met these people, they've played a distinct part in helping me be where I'm at today. One person in particular is one of my really good friends, and her name is Monica. And notice I said friend. We didn't start off as friends. We started off merely as colleagues. I met Monica when I transferred to her school. This was my fourth year of teaching, and this was my first year as a first grade teacher. And Monica was already teaching at the school. She was a 20-year veteran. I don't know how many of you guys have taught first grade students or have five and six-year-old students at your home, and you've seen their writing samples. Yeah. So I was panicking in the beginning of the year because they're writing. I'm like, OK, how am I going to get these students writing coherently by the end of the year? So the very first time I connected with Monica, it was a panic connection. Yeah, a panic connection. Because I thought I was teaching writing wrong. So I went to Monica during our planning period. I shut the door because I didn't want the admin to know that I was panicking. And I just released. I said, oh my gosh, Monica, I don't think I'm doing this right. 
I don't see any progress with my students. I need help. And I did just like that because I am extra. So I told her that, and you know what? She could have said several things. She could have said, you know what, Jessica? I'm busy. I can't help right now. She really could have just said, um, I think she's kind of crazy. But she didn't. She stopped what she was doing. She took time with me, and she just reassured me that, you know what, Jessica, you're actually doing um, what's best for your students, and just be consistent and continuously do it. I noticed within a month's time that my students' writing was actually getting better. And fast forward four years later, I'm in a different role in my district, and Monica's still teaching, but we have made a great connection. She will forever be a part of my professional learning network. Having the right people in our corners will definitely impact the way we tackle obstacles. Now, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about Muhammad Ali. When I say Muhammad Ali, everyone automatically thinks greatest boxer of all time or one of the greatest boxers of all time. But what if Muhammad Ali only decided to use one move. He decided to stand in place and just throw jabs. Just like this, throwing jabs. If Muhammad Ali only threw jabs, do you think he would have been successful? No. He could throw jabs, right? He could stand in one place and throw jabs. And then his opponent will come up beside him and psh, psh, that's it. Fights over round one. He would get knocked out. He couldn't fly like a butterfly and sting like a bee if he's laying on the ground. I'm just saying. And to be honest, I really don't think that his boxing career would have lasted as long. He had to apply different moves when he's fighting different opponents. He was flexible. This same concept applies in education. Let's say I'm teaching two-digit by two-digit multiplication. And you know what? I'm going to teach it the standard algorithm way because I taught it that way last year. My students got it that way last year. That's my favorite method. And you know what? When I went to school, I learned the standard algorithm, and it worked for me. Now, if I did that, would I really be doing what's best for my students? Absolutely not. It is important for me to give my students the tools that they need to be successful. Some students, they may get the standard algorithm way, but then others may need partial product, and they also may need the area model. Regardless, it is important for me to help my students be successful. I cannot apply the same strategies for all of the students because I have a diverse group of students. Just like boxers apply different moves when fighting different opponents. When you really look at the different boxers, some boxers actually went on to be champions. Let's take Muhammad Ali, Floyd Mayweather, Clarissa Shields, Rocky Marciano, Layla Ali. They had all of the right dynamics in place that set them aside to be champions. Educators, it is important that we have all of the right components to be champions for our students. In the words of the late Rita Pearson, every kid needs a what? Every kid needs a champion. So I challenge each and every one of you in this room right now if you know that you're going to be a champion for your students, I want you guys to stand up all across this room. Go ahead, stand up. If you're going to be a champion for your students, stand tall. I want you guys to raise your fists. And after I count to three, we're going to say this together. We're going to say, I am a champion. Okay? One, two, three. I am a champion. I hope each and every one of you are empowered and inspired. And from this day forth, I hope you will embrace the mindset of a boxer.
Thank you.